from the WYLN studios in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. WYLN Evening Edition at 5.30 starts right now. Good evening. It's Tuesday, April 12th, 2016. I'm Ann Gownley. A Hazleton man will spend the next 10 to 20 years behind bars after admitting guilt to charges of child molestation in two separate cases. 41-year-old David Cruz Vasquez was charged with two misdemeanor counts of indecent assault. Luzerne County Judge Michael Vaux imposed the jail sentence of 10 to 20 years, followed by a five-year probation. According to police, Vasquez was first arrested last June after police alleged that he molested a child under the age of 13 twice six years ago at a home in Hazleton. Police say he admitted to the crime and that he wanted to clear his conscience. No new charges were filed a month later, alleging that he molested a six-year-old girl three times at a home on West 4th Street in Hazleton. Vasquez will undergo an evaluation by the Sexual Offenders Assessment Board. He is now behind bars in the county jail. He was given credit for the 278 days he already served. As of last night, five GAR teachers are no longer working with the district. After violating a policy on alcohol consumption, the Wilkes-Barre Area School Board voted 7-2 to two to terminate Corey Brenner, Molly Evans, Jason Lachinsky, Jill Wooljack, Glenn Zimmerman. All five waived their rights to speak before the school board. The two members who voted against the terminations was board president Joe Caffrey and member Dino Galella. The teachers union is expected to file grievances appealing those terminations. A major manufacturer of fire trucks and heavy duty vehicles has been sold to a Florida based company. Kovach Mobile Equipment in Nesquahoning was sold to REV, which is a privately owned business out of Orlando. Kovach plans to keep its headquarters and manufacturing center in Nesquahoning. KME has produced fire trucks, tankers, and heavy duty vehicles in the area for the past 70 years. John Kovach III plans to retire as president and chief operating officer, but will be involved in the transition. His son, John Kovach IV, recently released a statement on Facebook saying, quote, I am still full-time at KME and I'm not going anywhere. Our employees are still full-time and are not going anywhere and headquarters will stay in Nesquahoning, unquote. State Senator Johnny Dechak also welcomed REV Group to Carbon County. He said that the company is a proven job creator and their expansion into the county will certainly add great value to the manufacturing landscape in Pennsylvania. KME is nearly 900 people in its workforce. Trinity Lutheran Church in Hazleton is preparing for a pork and sauerkraut dinner this weekend and the entire public is invited to attend. The dinner will be held from 4 to 6.30 this Saturday, April 16th. Betty Lou Utt, Secretary of the Church Council, said the food will be served family style and there'll be plenty of it. We have pork, sauerkraut, mashed potatoes, gravy, green beans, applesauce, rolls, coffee punch, and uh, cake for dessert. And we invite the uh, community to come and join us for this uh, all-you-can-eat meal. Tickets are $10, and for children under 12, tickets are just $5. Proceeds from the dinner will go towards the church. We have uh, many fundraisers throughout the year. Uh, in June, we always have our strawberry social. In uh, September, we have our peach social. We have a craft fair. We have a rummage sale coming up now in May. Uh, and uh, then we have our uh, uh, th different uh, affairs that come up besides. And uh, we invite everybody in the community to come and join us. If you are interested in tickets, you can call the church office at 570-454-3492. The right lane of Interstate 81 North at the Nanticoke exit 164 was closed today from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. for emergency bridge repair. According to PennDOT, a large hole opened up on the bridge that goes over State Route 29. Motorists are reminded to slow down and use extreme caution while traveling through that work zone. In Shenandoah, the bridge on Route 924 remains closed to traffic after officials found major faults. Work crews completely shut down the bridge earlier this morning after they found problems on the deck of the northbound lane. It will be closed until further notice and traffic is being detoured onto Herald Road and Laurel Street. It is not known yet if the closure will be temporary or the problems will close both north and southbound lanes until the construction is completed. 
Giant and Martin's food stores have released details on a recall from certain Pick Sweet Steamables seasoned summer vegetables. The steamable items were removed from the sale due to the potential listeria contamination. The product and the UPC code is up on your screen now. There have been no reports of illnesses to date. Listeria is a common organism found in nature and the consumption of food contaminated with it can cause sickness. Customers who have purchased these products should discard any unused portions and bring their purchase receipt to Giant or Martins for a full refund. For more information, you can call customer service at 1-888-814-4268. WYLN is pleased to announce that we will be hosting a live primary Republican debate for the 17th Congressional District. Currently, Congressman Matt Cartwright holds that seat in Washington, but his seat is up. Republicans Matt Connolly and Glenn Geisinger will go head-to-head -head in the debate to claim the spot on the Republican ticket. The debate will be live here on WYLN Monday, April 18th from 7 to 8 p.m. Topic A host Gary Perna will moderate and host of WYLN's The Storm Tiffany Cloud and LULAC political blog editor David Yonkai will be among the panelists asking questions. The winner of this April 26th primary will face off against Cartwright in the general election this November. Stay tuned to WYLN for more details on this upcoming debate. Exactly two weeks today will be election day here in Pennsylvania. Once again, WYLN will be bringing you all of the information you need during our election night coverage. Races from presidential to PA attorney general and 17th congressional district candidates to the Pennsylvania Senate will all be discussed throughout the evening. WYLN will have the most experienced political anal analysis in the studio on election night, including some old friends and some new faces. Live election night coverage starts at 8 p.m. Tuesday, April 26th, right here on WYLN. Time now for a first look at our forecast. Some rain this morning, but then it was pure sunshine. WYLN's Gary Perna is back in for Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic in the Weather Center with the details. Gary, after looking at the seven-day forecast yesterday, I hope the sunshine will continue to shine down on our area. Well, Anne, there's no doubt about that, and I think Mother Nature finally kicked out Old Man Winter and kicked him to the curb for now. And let me tell you, these temperatures we're going to see over the next week are looking really good, and that weekend is still looking pretty awesome to get out there. But currently across the nation, not looking too bad out there. We saw some 40s through the 50s up to the 80s, of course, down close to the south. So not looking too bad as we are in spring, and we're getting ready for some nice warmer temperatures this weekend. Past 24 hours here at home, not too bad either. 58 in Wilkesbury, 59 here uh, in Sealands Grove and throughout the area. And the low temperatures weren't really that bad either. We're holding steady here at about 57, or excuse me, 47 at the W Island studio. So what can we expect for the rest of the week and how much sunshine is in our future? We'll tell you all about it coming up in just a couple of minutes, Ann. Thanks, Gary. Coming up next, a look at last night's Crime Watch meeting at the Luzerne County Courthouse, where Crime Watch groups from all over the county came to hear from district attorney and other officials on how to help combat crime. Plus, Hazleton Code Enforcement is looking at continuing to clean up the area, and local residents are preparing for the annual Great PA Cleanup. More news, weather, and sports is coming your way only on WYLN. Stay tuned. You're watching WYLN News with Ann Gownley, Gary Perna, Julie Stefanovich, Paula Degnan, Chief Videographer Mike Lula, Weather with Meteorologist Joe Garbacic, and Sports with Eric D. Berardinas. We are a 501c3 nonprofit foundation created for the love of children. Uh, there's 500 children in foster care in Luzerne County. A child at any moment could come shopping free of charge and get whatever they need so that they feel loved, they feel worthy, and they feel ready to tackle life with a great support team behind them. Welcome to the extreme. 
The place where the greatest strength is your amazing enthusiasm. Where there's nothing more explosive than the sound of your applause. Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey presents Circus Extreme. Get ready for the greatest show on earth. Dare to experience Circus Extreme. Kids tickets are $10. Playing April 28th through May 1st at Mohegan Sun Arena at Casey Plaza. Get your tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. Last night, Luzerne County came together to learn more about stopping crime in our local neighborhoods. WYLN's Aaron Harvey has more. Numerous agencies from Pittston to Hazleton attended a countywide crime watch meeting held at the Luzerne County Courthouse last night. District Attorney of Luzerne County, Stephanie Salavantis, says she coordinated the meeting to increase public safety. Knowing that it is National um, County Government Month, uh, the month of April, I decided to talk to um, our county manager, Dave Pedri, and we talked about putting together a countywide crime watch meeting to discuss some of the services different agencies provide um, and their role the way they play in public safety. Fighting crime works best when everyone is on board. I always say that um, to fight this problem we have to do it as a team, not just law enforcement. We have to work with our, the citizens, the residents of Luzerne County and um, that's why crime watch is so important. Um, we have to have an open communication, open dialogue between law enforcement and the residents and uh, specifically crime watch groups because they know what is going on in their neighborhoods. Residents should think about becoming involved in their neighborhood crime watch. We need to make sure that people just stay involved. They need to know how important it is to stay involved, not sit on your couch and look at a Facebook page and see what's being posted, um, where you're going to see crime occurring in neighborhoods. You need to get involved and um, as as we get more people involved in Crime Watch, that will help us in the long run with the crimes being committed in our neighborhoods. President of the Wilkes-Barre Crime Watch, Charlotte Ropp, says she gets ideas on how to help others from the county meetings. It's important for everybody to be with each other from the county because we all have the same problems. We have problems getting people out. We share ideas and speakers, as you've seen, and, and we get ideas on how to help each other. And I think that's important that we're not alone in it. Yeah, and there's been a lot of new crime watches forming lately. One of the topics brought up at the meeting is the overpopulated Luzerne County Correctional Facility that is currently housing 750 inmates. The amount of money spent per day on just one inmate is $92. With 750 inmates, that's $69,000 a day and over $25 million a year. Individuals get arrested and they come into the jail. We're almost bed for bed with them in our facility. Uh, every day it's a challenge to see how we can move the population, reduce the population, but we have to do so in a secure manner. And we try to do that. We try to see uh, where we can move inmates to. We can get them into programs. We can move them up the North Thunder building. If we can get them into the day reporting center, we do that on a daily basis. Ideally, Larson would like to see a new prison built due to these concerns. We've outgrown our jail. Our jail's old. It's uh, structurally, it, it's sound, but uh, all the infrastructure needs to be uh, replaced. Uh, we're constantly, uh, a lot of maintenance uh, going on all the time. What a high population, obviously it's getting heavy use. It's a real strain on the facility itself, and we simply need more room to operate. Larson does not see a new prison being built anytime soon, but it's something that is being researched. In Wilkes-Barre for WYLN News, I'm Aaron Harvey. Thank you, Aaron. Coming up next, Gary Perna is back with a full look at our forecast. Stay tuned. More news is coming your way, including sports, here on WYLN. Hello, I'm Carol Druniak. With over half a century of service to the Republican Party, I'm running for delegate to the Republican National Convention. I've taught American history, held elected office, helped countless Republican candidates, and promoted Republican values in the media. I'm a true conservative who believes in the Constitution and the principles of liberty. Please vote Carol Druniak, delegate to the Republican National Convention. 
SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. There he's dressed sweet. On April 23rd, the Al C. Wiltsey Performing Arts Center in Hazleton will present the B Street Band, the original Bruce Springsteen tribute band at 730. Nearly 5,500 performances and 34 years later, the B Street Band is still the hardest working tribute band on the circuit. Tickets are on sale now at the locations on your screen. The B Street Band, April 23rd at the Al C. Wiltsey Performing Arts Center in Hazleton. Well, welcome back, and it's a beautiful day outside. A little cool out here, but not too bad. A lot more sunnier today than it was yesterday, and this is just a glimpse of what's to come over the next few days as we head into our weekend. And everyone's waiting for that. So let's take a look at the graphic today. And, you know, the rainfall that we saw in the past 24 hours, not too bad. Wilkes-Barre saw about 53 hundredths of an inch. Uh, you know, Last night when we talked, we said there was a chance for, you know, some rain throughout the night and into the day. I know this morning when I woke up, you know, there was some rain uh, going on. So, you know, hold true. And uh, though that is now behind us and we are ready for the nice warmer weather. Radar not showing us anything. Nice clear skies out there. There are some clouds lingering around. Nothing to be worried about. No storms coming uh, in the next few days. So let's take a look. The temperature 48 degrees here at the W Island Studios. We saw about 20 hundredths of an inch of rain in our uh, here at our rain gauge, and the winds moving in the north northwest. Uh, wind chill though makes it feel like 46, not too too bad. Up in the Wyoming Valley, from Nanticoke down through Lehman, not looking too bad. Those temperatures either really 49 throughout the whole thing. Nanticoke coming in at 53 though, so again, Wyoming Valley not looking too bad as well. Currently across the state, 49 in Avoca, 46 in Mount Pocono, 47 here in Hazleton, 54 out in Williamsport. And this was the past six hours. This ridge of snow, or excuse me, rain. Yeah, snow. What am I talking about? Rain moved through the area, so not really too much coming through, making for a nice way for nice and clear out there for these nice warm temperatures. So tonight, if you're traveling, 30 in Wilkes-Barre, um, this moon will be out. You'll be able to see that. 27 in Mount Pocono, 30 in Sealands Grove. It's not looking too bad tonight if you're traveling. Tomorrow, cloudy, 54 in Wilkes-Barre. We'll see about 50 degrees here in Hazleton, 56 in Mount Pocono, excuse me, 56 in Seals Grove and Mount Pocono coming in at 50. So those temperatures not looking too bad. And as we continue through with the regional look through Wednesday, not too bad. You know, we're going to overnight lows are going to be down into the, the low 30s. But, you know, overall throughout the day, especially Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, not looking too bad as we get ready to head into that wonderful weekend. And that wonderful weekend, yes, it's still there and we're still getting some nice 60s and close to 70 for Saturday and Sunday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and looking back, we call partly cloudy in the 50s, low 30s. Saturday and Sunday, look at that nice and sunny, 63 and 68. So we can hopefully maybe get out and enjoy the weekend this weekend. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back after this. Glenn Geisinger is a proven conservative running for Congress. Glenn Geisinger is a veteran of the 82nd Airborne Division who will keep our country safe. Glenn Geisinger is a small businessman who wants our economy to work for everyone. Glenn Geisinger is pro-life and pro-Second Amendment. Glenn Geisinger will find common sense answers to problems holding back our country. For principled leadership and conservative solutions, vote Glenn Geisinger on Tuesday, April 26th. This is Glenn Geisinger, and I approve this message. The Helping Hand Society's annual telethon will be held Saturday, April 23rd, live from the Health and Wellness Center at Hazleton and broadcast on WYLN TV 35. Enjoy local and regional entertainment all day Saturday from noon until 11 p.m. 
the Helping Hand Society's annual telethon live from the Health and Wellness Center in Hazleton on WYLN TV 35. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road, Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicapped accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. There are packages available to fit anyone's budget, restaurant, and catering on site. Our facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor, and private parties. Call 570-384-2314. The Hazleton City Code Office, along with the Fire Department, will be conducting a code sweep this Saturday, April 16th. The sweep will take place in the middle section of the city located between Broad and Diamond Avenue from Poplar Street to the Western City Line. The times of the code sweep will be between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. It will be in the Center City uh, District, which will be between Broad and Diamond Avenue from Poplar Street to the City Line on uh, Diamond Avenue where it meets its point. Uh, we're going to go as far as we can. We'll be starting at 9 in the morning. We'll be done around 1. At that time, the city attorney will be out with us with a structural engineer. We're going to be uh, documenting vacant homes, checking for blighted properties, and writing notice of violations to the International Property Maintenance Code. At this time, uh, whatever happened in the past happened, but we're going to start these code sweeps on a regular basis to hope to try to clean up the city and make it a little safer and cleaner place to live. The purpose of the code sweep is to help rebuild a safer, cleaner, and more compliant city. On the property such as uh, just tires in the yard, um, vehicles that are unregistered, uninspected, or just in total disrepair, disrepair. Uh, we're going to be looking for rubbish in the yard, scattered, just anything that's like an eyesore. If the property itself is in damage any kind of way, we're going to be sending out notice of violations, which will give you time to get it cleaned up. And we're not looking to get people in trouble. We're just looking for compliance to get the city cleaned up and looking nice again. Property owners and property occupants can visit publicecodes.cyberrigs.com slash ICOD to view the International Property Maintenance Code for free. This will be the first of many code sweeps planned for the 2016 year. And speaking of cleaning up, the Great American Cleanup is just over a week away. And WYLN not by the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce as members were preparing for the big day. The Chamber and PennDOT will once again be sponsoring the one-day cleanup on Saturday, April 23rd. The cleanup is an effort to encourage volunteers to get out and beautify their neighborhoods. Members at the Chamber were busy last week picking up supplies including gloves, safety vests, and trash bags for all of this year's participants. This is uh, 34 years now that the Chamber has been involved in the Great PA Cleanup. Uh, we have so many volunteers from over the area. There's uh, in, around 2,000 volunteers that help us every year with this cleanup effort. So it's a great volunteer effort. There's still time to get involved. If you'd like to get a group together to help clean up a local highway, a local park, a green space that you know is in need of cleanup. And let's face it, everyone knows an area that can use a little litter cleanup. And join us for a cleanup to make the Hazleton area a cleaner place. Once again, the Great Pennsylvania Cleanup takes place on Saturday, April 23rd, rain or shine. If you would like to join in the cleanup effort, you can contact the Chamber at 570-455-1509. Registration forms are also available at hazeltonchamber.org. Coming up next, Eric DeBerdinas is in with sports here on WYLN, plus Gary Perna will have one final look at our forecast. Stay tuned. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. There's only one Hazleton-based television station that reaches voters across the entire region. WYLN-TV, the best political talk with extensive programming options. WYLN-TV, your stop for political talk.
Rain has plagued baseball's early season at all levels. Locally, play on the diamond has been limited. Last night, though, the Rail Riders avoid weather troubles, causing trouble for the Paw Sox. Tyler Olson on the bump for the Rail Riders. He goes for scoreless and receives help in the first. Here, the first of three hits for Donovan Solano. Bases loaded when he goes up the middle for the RBI. Ben Gamble with quite the night at the plate. Single in the first, and he mirrors the inning with a double right here in the second for the reigning International League Rookie of the Year. Then we fast forward to the fifth inning, and it's a non-traditional triple. The fielder loses track of the ball, and Gamble is able to take three. He ends a homer shy of the cycle, and he's on base after the triple as Cesar Pueo clears them. The three-run blast to the vacant bleachers, 6-3 to three the final, and the Rail Riders back even at 2-2 two and two on the young season. Opening day starter Chad Green back on the hill for the second game of the series tonight in Paul Tuckett. First pitch at 6-15, and Lehigh Valley playing in front of fans for the first time this season. The Iron Pigs have only managed to get in two games in front of an empty Coca-Cola park due to construction. Another doubleheader tonight versus Rochester's Zach Elfin gets the start in Game 1. First pitch at 5.15, and that's already started, with Mark Apple following in Game 2. In the pros, Abington Heights product, Corey Spangenberg, and the Padres in Philadelphia. Masahiro Tanaka on the mound for the Yankees, taking on the Blue Jays, and the struggling Mets host Miami. Rangers-Penguins playoff series starts tomorrow. The Capitals' Flyers drop the puck on Thursday. Tonight on Late Edition, highlights from a variety of spring sports. But next, Gary Perna is in with a final look at the forecast. Stay tuned. I want you to attend the Kids, Clays, and Vets Benefit Fundraiser for the Hazleton Area High School Sports Shooting Club at Whitetail Shooting Preserve, Saturday, April 30th, starting at 9 a.m. There'll be a trap competition, six-station money shoot, sporting clays, and Dirty Harry pistol range. Great food, tricky trades, vendors. You get to meet Staff Sergeant Eric Olson from the WYLN TV show Warrior Summit Outdoors. Plus, World War II vehicles will be on display all day. The Kids, Clays, and Vets Benefit Fundraiser at Whitetail Shooting Preserve, Saturday, April 30th, starting at 9. Mary's dress like a business, dances. On April 23rd, the L.C. Wiltsey Performing Arts Center in Hazleton will present the B Street Band, the original Bruce Springsteen tribute band at 7.30. Nearly 5,500 performances and 34 years later, the B Street Band is still the hardest working tribute band on the circuit. Tickets are on sale now at the locations on your screen. The B Street Band, April 23rd at the L.C. Wiltsey Performing Arts Center in Hazleton. I'm Staff Sergeant Eric Olson, and this week on Warrior Summit Outdoors, the vets and I travel to Pennsylvania Dutch Country to hunt snow geese. That bird was hit hard. Please join us this week for some great action and some bigger laughs on Warrior Summit Outdoors. All right, so if you're traveling to, uh, tomorrow, not looking too bad. 54 in Wilkes-Barre. We'll say about 55 here in Hazleton. We'll call it partly cloudy, but you know what? It's starting to warm up, up out there. So, you know, we're getting ready for this nice warm weather we've all been waiting for for such a long time. So temperatures throughout Tuesday and the Wednesday and Thursday, not looking bad. At night, it's going to get a little cool down into the 30s, but nothing too, too major for our area. And I know that's all a warm, welcome to the spring finally because we have just been waiting and waiting and waiting even though we didn't really didn't have a major winter but still nice to get these temperatures in 53 for tomorrow and 59 on thursday and friday at 58 but saturday and sun sunday still looking pretty good at 63 and 68 so that weekend still looking good so hopefully for the blue and white game out in Penn State. It'll be nice and sunny. Everyone have a good time out with that. So, uh, you know, nice and warm for the weekend and the rest of this week. So, we're ready for summer. Bring it on. Oh, yeah. I remember going to a blue and white game. It was snowing. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> normally, they're not too lucky with the weather. But no, it looks, but uh, looks good this hopefully week. it keeps that way. Work on our tans. Yes. You can. I'll I, that wasn't it. meant to be facetious. Have a good night. <laughs>